welcome to another edition of 10 buck test bench and if you can probably as you can probably tell from my voice <clears throat> i'm struggling with a really really nasty head cold but i wanted to sit down this evening and take a look at this other signal generator we had signal generator and tracer uh, accurate instruments company inc model 153 evidently this came in two versions the uh, four tube and three tube version and this is the later three tube version which means I can get a manual for it if I wanted one or need one badly enough <clears throat> and you'll just have to bear with the voice here I can't do a whole lot better than this at the moment and uh, I had taken a quick look at this unit early on and had set it aside because I had found some smoked capacitors and I'm going to just do this this is what the inside of the thing looks like. It is just full of soot from those capacitors burning up. And I hadn't looked very closely at it when I saw this last time. I just buttoned it back up and set it aside and was speculating that uh, one of these was in, uh, in the power supply circuit maybe and had burned up and I was hoping I hadn't taken the transformer but now that I've actually taken a moment to take a look at this thing and really look at it rather than making uh, shooting from the hip as soon as I opened it up this time I noticed that these capacitors are right across the power line and to ground so if you need an argument to use real X Y rated capacitors for noise bypassing on your power line there it is right in front of your face. This thing has literally burned up these capacitors. Let's see if I can get this one turned over. Look at that. Uh, there's a big piece of this capacitor just missing. These things just went up in smoke. So this bodes well. Use the hand in front of the camera here. This probably means that the power transformer is fine. I'm just going to cut these out of here for the time being and get them right out of here. And Let's get a close look at that thing. Uh, just blown right open. But knowing where they are and what they are now, my level of concern, oh this one too is just split wide open. I'm wondering if this took a lightning strike for both of them to explode like that. that this might have taken a lightning strike. And that's not a big deal either. You can see this one's actually split, I think. You can probably see that in the camera. And uh, we'll replace these. If this unit works, we'll replace these with some X, y rated, X or Y rated capacitors. We'll put one across the line and a couple of ground. But since this is, or however, since this is tube gear, I'm not awfully concerned about if it did take a lightning strike as long as the power transformer is intact uh, I'll go ahead and restore this thing now there's a couple of big multi-part filters of course they're gonna have to be changed out in this unbelievable just how much soot those two things generated and uh, yeah look at that it's all soot on the inside of this from those However, it should clean up. We've got a 6350. And I gotta be careful not to uh, wipe the numbers off the tube here with the Windex that I've got on my rag. So we're gonna take a quick look at this. Uh, and sorry if I'm a little bit logy too. I took some uh, cold medicine a little while ago and probably shouldn't be playing with this in the condition I'm in but I just want to take a quick look at the power transformer let me click okay get this. we've got some really old electrolytes here so I'm just gonna take a quick look and look for shorts and that needle just jumped that doesn't look oh that, that's ground so I'm not seeing a direct short there and again that's ground no direct shorts there. Let's go up to a higher high range. And let's see. Follow some resistors. Yep, that goes to ground. Again. 
And that goes to ground. So we're, we should be kind of okay for a short period of time here to power this on. Boy, there's some kludgy wiring in this thing. This is a commercial unit, and four bands, four coils, one, two, three, four, and it's spread out into four bands on the RF spectrum up to 250 megahertz. But I got a feeling the tuning is gonna be very quick on this. However, it's interesting to see if we can get it up and running. Now I am gonna plug this in. It's presently off. <clears throat> I'm going over here 250 volts AC and I just very quickly want to see if the let's see that's ground I want to see if the AC on, on the secondary is any good okay that's on a 250 volt scale that's a hundred and we're coming up on 120 volts so it looks like the secondary the transformer is okay that's roughly what I'd expect to see somewhere between 120 and 150 volts now let's see if the caps are holding anything. Yes, they are. That one's holding a charge. That one's holding a charge. Okay, so it should be safe to momentarily run some tests. That one's holding a charge and leaking down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, let's see. Yeah, filament, filament right here. I'm going to take a look at the filament voltage. On the 10 volt scale, we've got eight volts so this is for six volt tubes obviously and the reason I'm doing that is curiously this unit has two six volt tubes a 6350 and a 5687 but somebody has stuck a 4BC5 in here now either this is supposed to have a 6BC5 and they substituted a 4BC5 which is going to run bloody hot but it probably would work or they just stuck a random tube in there so I'm going to have to dig up the schematic on this before I go much further but on first glance it looks like this is going to be repairable and restorable so that's good news and that's going to be it for this evening, short and sweet. I am going to be crawling into bed. I've taken some cold medicine. I'll probably take a little more uh, Jack Daniels cold medicine and head off and stick my head on a pillow. I'm the radio mechanic, <laughs> and not so much tonight. See ya.